بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته There is a pillar in the salah that is repeated in every salah and it's required for the validity of that salah and many Muslims do not think about the meanings of it we are talking about at tahiyyat the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pay special attention to At-Tahiyyat. Teaches it to the Sahaba as he teaches them the Holy Quran. He makes them memorize it as they memorize a surah in the Holy Quran. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an, he reported that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught me At-Tahiyyat. While my hand was between his two hands. And he taught me as he teaches me a chapter in the Holy Quran, saying, At-Tahiyyatu lillah wa salawat wa tayyibat, As-Salamu alayka iyuha al-Nabiyu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, As-Salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. The meaning of At-Tahiyyat is the plural of Tahiyya, which is literally greeting. So multiple greetings here to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you need to ask anything or to address anyone, you start with what? With a greeting. So here the Messenger وسلم, is teaching us first to greet Allah Almighty with all kind of beautiful and majestic greetings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. And thus the plural is used. Not one single greeting, but all. So when a person says it, when a Muslim says it, he remembers, observes the magnitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remembers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the creation, the one who brought them to life, the one who is feeding them and sustaining them, the one who causes them to die, the one who will resurrect them again, the one who will hold them accountable, the one who will later on punishes those who deserve punishments or those whom Allah Almighty wants to punish, forgives those whom He wants to forgive, and gives His pleasure and blessings to those whom Allah Almighty wants to please remembers all the verses in the Holy Quran that speaks about the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So saying at tahiyyatullah, you put in your mind that you are addressing and greeting Allah Almighty, your Creator. After this, you say, was salawat. Salawat is the plural of salah, prayer. Could be understood as two things. The salah in general, the salah that you do, the daily prayers, and this applies to all the obligatory salah and the sunnah salah, the nafil salah and general salah. As well as the verbal one which is the dua. Both of them can be included in the salah. They belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty taught us this. He says, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتِ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ or وَأَنَا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ For you when you say it. Clear? Belongs only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one deserves to be worshipped with any kind of worship. That is why the plural of worship here. Any kind of worship. None deserve it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after that comes At-Tayyibat. Tayyibat means good things. Desirable things. And here we have two things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that the beautiful speech is raised and presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The beautiful speech, not any kind of speech. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَيْهِ يَصْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ To him is raised the beautiful speech. That is on the speech part. On the action part, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that Allah Almighty is good and He accepts only what is good. Nothing else is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So this understanding of At-Tahiyyat, the three words in the beginning of At-Tahiyyat, covers actually all aspects of Islam. There could be a different understanding to it as well. One of them is that At-Tahiyyat speaks about the verbal ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it includes the greeting and tasbih and dhikr, recitation of the Holy Quran and dua, etc. As-salawat refers to the worships of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the body worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is salah or zakah or hajj or others. When it comes to at-tayyibat, referring to the financial ibadah, like zakah and charity and so on. Subhanallah, again covering all of Islam. Could be a different understanding of it as well. At-tahiyyat referring to the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The belief system in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As-salawat refers to the Islamic pillars in Islam. And at-tayyibat refers to ihsan, the highest level of morals and characters and goodness. Again, covering all aspects of the religion. So such a precise words that cover so many different meanings. Now after finishing the greeting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes the salam to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You say assalamu alayka ayyuha nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greeting to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can use the present form as if you are addressing the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of you saying assalamu alayka ayyuha nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh which is the original form. Some of the Sahaba after the death of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say Assalamu Ala Nabi wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Both are okay, there is no harm with any one of them Salam is known to everybody, greeting to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Greeting of peace or peaceful greetings and beautiful greetings to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Beautiful And then after that you say wa Rahmatullah So it is Rahma from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiveness. Allah Almighty already forgave the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he does not need that, isn't it? Allah Almighty forgave whatever in the past or in the future of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is already purified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is not required. So here the Rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns into goodness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Barakah is an emphasis of that or an extra. The Barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplications of that upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Both understanding are acceptable and correct. Now, here immediately after greeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, greeting the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to know about the importance and the status of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Islam. Allah Almighty said in the Holy Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ We have raised for you your mention, elevated for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your mention. How come? Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned. You say that in Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. So you mention the name of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You say in At-Tahiyyat, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. After the wudu, in the adhan, in the iqama, when, you, when somebody wants to embrace Islam and so on, repeated often and often, both. And here in the greeting, immediately after greeting the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you start greeting the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because there is no way to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No way, it's impossible. How are you going to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As He wants or as you want? As he wants, obviously. If you are doing something to someone, you have to do it according to what that person, that one wants. So you are watching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only according to what he wants. How do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants? Through his books and his messengers. No other way to know. So it's impossible for anyone to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through the Messenger of Allah. This reality is repeated in the book of Allah Almighty. In the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty teaches the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say, O oh Muhammad, to them, say to mankind, so say to the believers, so to everyone, say to them, if you truly love Allah Almighty, if you truly love God, then follow me. 
and God will love you, Allah Almighty will love you and forgive your sins. No other one. Now, after you finish that, the Messenger وسلم, is teaching us a secret formula, or actually it is a well-known formula, but it's very effective in instilling love and harmony and compassion among people. The Messenger وسلم, said, by Allah Almighty, you will never be admitted in paradise until you believe. And you will never believe until you love one another. Subhanallah. No way. It's impossible to be a true believer if you do not love other believers. By Allah Almighty, the Messenger of Allah is swearing with the most. You will never be admitted in paradise until you believe. And you will never believe until you love one another. Shall I tell you about something? If you will do it, you will love one another. They said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, spread the greeting of peace among you. The greeting of salam. Say assalamu alaikum to anyone. Assalamu spread it. Whosoever you meet in front of you, out of all believers, not only people you know, not only your friends, not only people you are okay with, everyone. If you do that, you will love one another. This works on all levels, whether it is between husband and wife, between family members, between relatives, between neighbors, between friends, and between strangers. All of them. Spreading greeting of peace. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned that towards the hereafter, greeting will be on acquaintances only. You will not greet except people you know. Sadly, many Muslims are already doing that. You don't greet except people you know. Greeting becomes on acquaintances only. Instead of greeting everyone as the Messenger of Allah teaching us. So this is the key to love and compassion. That key is repeated in a tashahud. Often and often. So after greeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, greeting the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after that you mean what do you do? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to greet yourself. Subhanallah. Did anyone teach you ever to greet yourself? None, except Allah Almighty and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nobody ever taught you that. But Allah Almighty told us if you entered any place when there is nobody, greet yourself. It's a greeting from Allah Almighty upon you, subhanAllah. You entered the place, please say, Assalamu Alayna or Assalamu Alayya. Repeat it. On and the other creatures, good righteous creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you know them or not, whether they are hidden or seen, all the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are righteous. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us. The Messenger وسلم, taught us also in a tashahud, say, Assalamu alayna, greeting upon us, upon ourselves first. So after the Messenger وسلم, who comes? Yourselves first. SubhanAllah. It's obviously, if you don't see yourself, if somebody does not save himself and he saves everyone else, what did he get? Nothing. If you helped everybody to pass high school and get a certificate and you did not. So you, you, did, you failed to save yourself. The most important thing. The, the one who deserves your most attention in the beginning. When you pay attention to yourself, that is when it reflects upon others. That is when you start loving other people. People who hate themselves usually hate everybody else, God forbid. They became envious, They're filled with hatred. People who, who love themselves, not in a selfish manner, but choosing what is good and what is righteous and what is beneficial all the time. Those are the ones who actually try to help other people. They are thinking positively all the time. So the positive thinking starts with what? Immediately. Start with yourself and immediately the Messenger وسلم, said, with the same greeting, not a different greeting. That is why. This is the key from the Messenger وسلم. Pay attention. It's not greeting upon myself and then greeting upon the rest. No. He said, greeting upon ourselves and upon all the righteous creatures of Allah Almighty. So it's not selfish. Is it selfish? No. You are including everybody with the same salam, with the same greeting. But it starts with yourself. 
So greeting upon ourselves and the righteous creatures from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are the righteous creatures from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He didn't say righteous only among human beings, for example. So automatically it will include all human beings who are righteous. It will include all the jinn who are righteous. Is it only that? No. Including all the angels who are righteous as well. All of them are righteous. Does it stop there? Not necessarily, because there are many other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are righteous and we are not aware of. So we say all the righteous creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we know them or not, whether they are hidden or seen. Now, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, teaching us something that is very beautiful regarding that. When you say this, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this will apply to every creature in the heavens or even between heaven and earth. So it's not only on earth, all. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the other hadith that if you will do that, you have actually greeted every righteous servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in heaven or on earth. After finishing that, you say the most important thing. The tashahud starts with greeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger وسلم, and it ends with paying the witness, declaring the statement that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his messenger and his servants. Okay. Starts with the most important thing, ends with the most important thing. The phrase upon which the heavens and earth were created. For worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, declaring the oneness and lordship and the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creatures. It's a display of the creativity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. Now, after finishing that, you have finished tashahud. But there is comes after the shahud, you have to say Salah al Ibrahimiya. Salah al Ibrahimiya, you know it, all of it, greeting the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family and his supporters and followers. Now, after you finish that, there is one something that is recommended, which is to make dua. Many people when they finish the shahud, they immediately say salam and this one. After finishing the tashahud and before taslim, this is a very important time and place for dua. The dua is most likely to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not be in a hurry to say salam. Do not be in a hurry to say taslim, especially if you are praying alone. Now you can pray for yourselves and your family members and your relatives and friends and then for all believers. Who taught us that? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Almighty mentioned to us a similar dua by Nuh Alayhi Salam. Nuh Alayhi Salam prayed to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Rabbi Firli, starting with himself. Oh, Allah Almighty have mercy upon me, forgive me. Wali walidayya and to my parents. Wali man dakhla baytiya mu'minan and to those who enter my house among the believers, my friends and my relatives and my acquaintances and my colleagues, all the Muslims around you and my neighbor. And wali al-mu'minina wal mu'minat and to the believing men and believing women, everyone. So that is the etiquette when you make a good dua. Do not be selfish. Include people around you and people further and then include all the believers in your dua. That is the etiquette of the dua. Now, tashahud itself actually teaches us the etiquette of dua. You start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You start by the salah upon the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then you make the dua that you want. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this very clearly. If someone wants to make a dua, let him praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say salah upon the Messenger sallallahu Then choose from among the dua whichever is closer to him, whatever he wants. Depends on what you need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your own dua. What do you want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And especially at that time, what is more pressing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imagine if the Messenger sallallahu tells you that you have one dua that is guaranteed to be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it and say it. What is it going to be? Whether it is in this world or in the hereafter, or in both. So you need to concentrate and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with such a dua. We'll conclude with mentioning one aspect about the tahiyyat or the tashahud, which is it is desirable, it is sunnah, that when you make 
the, uh, the, the dua at the end to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from four things that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhabi jahannam wa min adhabi al-qabr wa min fitnati al-mahya wa al-mamat wa min fitnati al-masih al-dajjal. O oh Allah Almighty, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of hellfire and from the punishment of the grave and from the trials and tribulation of life and death and from the trials and tribulation of Al-Masih al-Dajjal, the false Messiah. At the end of every salah, the minimum to make of dua, at least make these dua. It's one sentence. Four things seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them. That was the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is desirable in tashahud to point with your tashahud finger, the index finger. And throughout the salah, the Muslim looks at his place of sujood. That is the sunnah in the salah. Keep your eyesight fixed to the place of sujood. Except when you say tashahud, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh, you move your eyesight, eye focus from the place of sujood to your finger that is pointed as a remembrance. In the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say this is worse on shaytan than a sword. Because that is why he was kicked from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he refused that. Refuse to obey, and you are obeying. You are declaring it in front of everybody. You are de declaring it in front of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels around you know about it, the Muslims around you know about it, and the jinn around you knows about it. The creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are witnesses upon you. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned even the place where you've done all your righteous deed will be a witness for you in the hereafter. So when you are reading a tahiyyat, concentrate on the meaning of the tahiyyat. Remember that you are in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are in a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And say it with your heart and with your tongue. And pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after you finish. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the best for you in the hereafter and, the here, uh, and in this world. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.